very well from the crowd size. What is the path? What is the path to the nomination? What do you tell supporters out there who are questioning whether you have the support staff and the ability to make this happen? Well, first of all, this summer we came close to not surviving. So uh, I think there was a period there when it was reasonable to wonder what was going on. Uh, we've built a campaign of solutions. If you go to newt.org, you'll see a proposed 21st century contract with America that's pretty elaborate, probably the most substantive of any campaign in recent times. And um, we are now methodically doing better and better. People, uh, both from the debates and from the various speeches, are responding very strongly. There were three major speeches in Iowa in the last 10 days. People, I think, in every single news story said, I won all three events that were, that were multiple candidate events. Um, and we're seeing it in our fundraising. We've, we've already raised uh, $2 million in five weeks, which is almost as much as we raised, in fact, about almost as much as we raised the whole rest of the campaign. And it's accelerating, uh, largely online. Uh, <clears throat> we're opening offices in Iowa, New Hampshire, South Carolina. We already have offices in Georgia and Florida. And I think we'll continue to accelerate. Do you have to win Iowa? I think we have to be in the top two or three in Iowa. We have to be competitive in New Hampshire, where Romney probably may well be his strongest state in the country, uh, either that or Massachusetts. Uh, and then we should, you know, our goal is to win South Carolina and then to go on and win Florida. And then from that point on, be in a very, very competitive environment. I'll meet the press. You were asked about Paul Ryan's Medicare plan. This is what you said. I don't think right-wing social engineering is any more desirable than left-wing social engineering. I don't think imposing radical change from the right or the left is a very good way for free society to operate. Charles. Uh, the radical engineering in that case, I suspect, was the fact that the Ryan plan would substitute existing Medicare for a uh, subsidy where the government would give a subsidy for individual to buy private insurance. Um, Romney has come out with a plan that incorporates what Ryan is doing, but would add uh, the alternative of keeping Medicare right. as it is. Is that your position, and is that is that not radical social engineering, or is it less radical social engineering? Well, you know, you should go back and play David Gregory's question. And David Gregory said, if there's a very unpopular plan. He didn't say Ryan. If, if something but that is was very, the plan that was on the table. Well, no, 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 but he said if, if something is very unpopular, should Republicans ram it through? No, we had just lived through Obamacare being rammed through. My advice, having successfully passed welfare reform, having, by the way, successfully reformed Medicare so well in 96 nobody noticed it, uh, having balanced the budget for four time, years in a row for the only time in your lifetime, my advice is that you ought to make sure people understand what you're doing and they support it. Now, I actually do think Romney has improved, and I, and I suspect Paul would agree, that Romney has improved Paul's proposal because he does allow you to say, you can take the money and stay in the current system, or you can go over and you can get a brand new position. Is, is that your position? position? That's not, I, I wouldn't object to that. That's a piece of it. But it, it, it's a much larger question if you're talking about health care. But there's, a, there's another part to that. <clears throat> I would actually make that offer next year. I mean, I'd say, fine, if, if, if the choice is, let's allow people to have the choice of a private sector insurance plan, which they buy, and I would also, as Congressman Tom Price does, allow them to pay more out of their own pocket if they want to. You could go to a voluntary premium support plan this next year. That is assuming you think people want it. Do now, you, Do you think people want it? I think some people will want it. I think a lot of people will be very cautious. Uh, but I think imposing it is a real gamble. And that's the radical social engineering, giving no alternative. I think when you impose upon people no alternative about a plan they don't understand, that they think is at the center of their life, it is very dangerous for any party. Why? Mr. Speaker, you started the drill here, drill now movement through your right. group solutions now. And uh, I don't know if you noticed, but over the weekend, there were several hundred protesters outside the White House demonstrating against the Keystone XL pipeline. Right. And you're aware that uh, previously, you know, pipelines like Prudhoe Bay, there have been spills, accidents. Uh, do you have any reservations about backing a pipeline or more drilling, given the bad track record? Well, first of all, it's not a very bad track record. 
And I don't think any Alaskan would suggest to you that they ought to close the pipeline. I don't think any Texan would suggest to you they ought to close the pipelines in Texas. Uh, if you look at a map of the U.S. and where there are pipelines around this country, it's astonishing how much natural gas and how much oil we move around this country. Uh, we do it with an extraordinarily safe record. And most of, the, most of the allegations about the Keystone Pipeline are just plain baloney. They involve a, a supposed threat to an aquifer, which is clearly geologically impossible. It's not going to happen. So what the president's doing is the president doesn't want to make the environmentalists mad, and he doesn't want to infuriate everybody who wants a job. So in the middle of 9% unemployment, he's doing exactly what he used to do when he was a state senator. He's voting president. So you think that basically on Prudhoe Bay and what happened down in the Gulf, no problem? I don't know of anybody in Louisiana who isn't angry that, that the president has crippled their economy, cost high, over 100,000 jobs, and, and basically forced the major big deep drills to leave. You know, when, it, when a company issues a report that says, because of political instability in the United States, we're now moving to the Congo, there is something profoundly wrong with the Obama administration. Steve, Mr. Speaker, I want to stick <clears throat> with energy policy and play a clip from an ad that you starred in just a couple of years ago. We don't always see eye to eye, do we, Newt? No, but we do agree our country must take action to address climate change. We need cleaner forms of energy, and we need them fast. That was a striking ad for me, a striking ad for, I think, a lot of Republicans around the country. Is the earth warming? If so, why is it warming? And what is that urgent action we need to well, take? Well, first of all, it's probably the dumbest single thing I've done in recent years. It is inexplicable. As somebody used to say, you know, there aren't enough uh, hay wagons to stand on to get, to get people to understand that one. So you just need to kind of relax and go, that was dumb. Were you uh, being held hostage when that was No, it, just, it was just dumb. I was, I was trying to do something I failed to do. Uh, because I, I do think it's important for conservatives to be in the middle of the debate over the environment. And I think, and I think we can, and I wrote a book uh, with Terry Maple called Contract with the Earth, outlining a pro-market, pro-entrepreneur, innovative environmentalism. Um, let me say, first of all, this will probably get me into, into some interesting arguments. I actually don't know where the global warming is occurring. Uh, the vast majority of the National Academy of Science says it is. A, a minority says it is not. Uh, science is not actually voted on. Science is a function of truth. Uh, what I do know is that, that if you look at exactly what was said in that ad, finding innovative new ways of getting cleaner energy ought to be something most Americans feel pretty comfortable with. I, I testified against cap and trade the same day that Al Gore testified in favor. American Solutions fought to defeat it in the Senate and were part of defeating it. I do not think you should have a gigantic central government model of solution. And I don't think you should spend trillions Did of dollars on a theory. Did you then believe in warming or no? No, I, I back then said, said, look, I, I'm an amateur paleontologist. I, I, I wanted to be a vertebrate paleontologist as a child. The Earth's temperatures go up and down over historic, you know, over geologic times over and over again. Uh, as recently as 11,000 years ago, the, the Gulf Stream quit for 600 years. And for 600 years, you had an ice age in Europe because there was no warm water coming up. And then it started up again. Nobody knows why it quit. Nobody knows why it started up. So I'm agnostic, but what I'm saying, I would say to all my conservative friends, don't assume automatically the entire National Academy of Sciences is wrong. And I would say to the National Academy, don't assume that a vote by a renowned scientist is necessarily true. Speaker, we're going to have much more with you and the panel after a quick break. And don't forget, log on. Your questions on Special Report Online. I'm often asked the question, is investing in gold right for me? In fact, many people think that owning gold is only for the wealthy, but you can own gold with a minimal investment. It's easy to own gold. At Goldline, our clients have